Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in automation with the public release of the Light Campaign V3 on the first patch that has just dropped to the open beta. And uh, yeah, uh, you can see that from the beige background. It's very beige, it's very 70s now. Uh, there will be more designs coming for these uh, for these design rooms, of course, um, so fret or not. But yes, today we start a new Let's Play. And as you could see from last time I ran a, uh, uh, well, a Let's Play like this, that was with uh, the Ahan and shit boxes, uh, we did have a poll and the clear second favorite was Frenian sports cars. So today we are going to start a new let's play with Frenian sports cars. But there will be a little bit more to it than just a simple let's play. And that is down to me being hosting a design competition. Uh, now there, there are no prizes, it's just for the prestige, the ultimate prestige of, uh, of something. Dig digital e -pin. yes, that it is. So, um, the competition will be judged by only me, only myself, Kirob, the uh, not so knowledgeable, and um, it will be quite similar to how the official automation design competition was uh, running, and a bit more informal than that. Um, yes, no prizes or anything, but it should be a lot of fun. And so, how does it work? Okay, All right, hear me out, you, you need to... to uh, to, to listen very carefully. For each model that I design, I will pick one of the trims that will be completely blank, like blank designs, that you get to style. So there will be one per episode, and these will be linked in uh, the description below the ep episode, each episode. And once the playthrough is completed, you will have one week before your designs need to be sent in. And more details on how to name them and where to send them, that all, all will follow. The rules are pretty simple. No mods, no changes to the car itself, no morphing, and only change the, uh, the trim's visual design. And that also means that you're not allowed to use any additional aero fixtures. And it is one car submission per person, per car that I pick. And once the winners are chosen in one or many judging episodes, I will drive the winners in BeamNG Drive around the test track and compare my times to the automation test track times. And uh, yes, they basically drive the company's history after it has been concluded. A, a nice look back to what we designed over the course of the years. And I will pick the individual winners for each car, and I will pick an overall winner that will be determined by the highest sum score throughout the competition. Sounds like fun? Let's do it. Okay, I cleared all my saves, all cars are gone, all saves are gone. And I, the only change I need to do so that people are not freaking out too much is set the power measurement to horsepower and uh, for the rest we're just running a metric. Alright, now we need to talk about what you are going to design and what we are going to play in this uh, little playthrough. I know we start at the starting point of insane difficulty, I think it would be reasonable, but I'm going to give myself a little bit of fitting, a fitting edge in technology, just to make the start a bit easier, because a six times score multiplier and these settings, it's pretty rough, it's pretty rough. Uh, so we need to learn about the company, and the company's name is Mirano. A little Italian influence, but... Um, Maybe, maybe, Sw maybe a little like Swiss Italian. They, they have a bit of Germanness in them too, because I can't switch off my Germanness. So <laughs> I can't just pretend to be an Italian. That's so not me. Uh, and anyway, uh, we are going to uh, let, let me pick up my notes here. Yeah? Um, I have a few pillars defined so that it's all clear cut of what we want to achieve. The uh, three pillars are uh, separated into general stuff engine related stuff and styling stuff okay general the cars need to be lightweight they are in air quotes engine first they are drivers cars and they have high agility 
so they need to be pretty small and quick cornering. Alright, so far, so good, like light sports car archetype, basically. For the engine, the engine pillar is small capacity, high revving, naturally aspirated, and high quality. And for the styling, very important to you guys, because you are doing the styling, the styling is simple, elegant, and has attention to detail. I think that is a really interesting combination. All right, that, let me repeat that. You are designing cars that are fitting the designs I make, that are simple, elegant, and have attention to detail. All right, that should be it. Let me set up the campaign tech pool. My goal is to bring down a score multiplier to five. So I have a few more points to spend. Two on engine architecture, uh, one on bottom end, one on uh, three on top end because we need to rev. Fuel system, two, and exhaust one. That I think encapsulates the engine first uh, pillar we had. And what more do I want? Hmm. I just recently made it such that we've upped the... Oh, did we actually do that? can't remember if we actually put that through. I should read the patch notes again. I think we upped the penalty for uh, the body age. Or maybe we did not. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, so um, if we did, then I would put something into here. Ooh, oh, 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 that is it's going too far. Oh, shit, that 1% extra gives us a lot of score. Mm, all right, um, now let's keep it at a one somewhere. Maybe on the tires, because that is handling related, right? So, and I think this rounds up nicely to five. Yeah, let's go with that. Sounds good to me. So Merano has been created. Here we go. And first things first is check the markets and uh, check what's going on here. So we have level two dealership network in Fruinia. Mm, 15, oh, we only have 200 million. 16 million to upgrade that to level three. I think that is something we need to do. Here we have zero dealerships, so let's upgrade that a bit. And I think we end up with something like this. We can't afford more, but that has already cost us a fair amount. Uh, marketing not required right now, but uh, before the first car releases, I think we put a little bit into this. So, uh, we can go back here and now let's check out the world markets. Not that many, oh, wait a second, uh, all available countries. And there we go. So, demographic sizes. What do we have? Uh, uh, Sport, sport budget, that's not that much, but this is at our current, this is at our current awareness. What is our awareness? Mm, it's three, three percent? Is that just because it hasn't ticked yet? That might actually be the case. No, that is pretty abysmal. Well, um, at three percent, the current demographic sizes are rather limited. Sport, light sport though, has 63 cars. Hmm, 63. The family segment looks healthy, but we're not going to go into that family sport. Hmm. So we kind of need to pick our first type of car. And I think the first one needs to be a bit of a generic one. It's more light sport, could double as a sports car. Uh, we could dive into a little of a convertible sport. There's not a no great market for that, but, uh, yeah, yeah, that doesn't look great, does it? But at, this is at 3%, so there, there will be more. But this is not even, this is not even satisfying a small factory one. Well, I think that's what we're going for. Small factory one should be our starting factory. So, um, car project, <laughs> let's build our first car. That's what we're here for. It's supposed to be marketed to both at Avesia and Fruinia. We kind of kind of live there, I guess. There, between Switzerland and Italia. Italia. And the only thing I know is that this car will be called the Titus. And um, yeah, a model. <laughs> Which one do we choose? I think I have a pretty good idea. It will be 93 2.1 meter wheelbase. Maybe not. My computer has a spinny disk, so it takes forever to load. 
No, oh, it was that one. Ah, it was perfect. Yes, exactly. Exactly that one. This is the one that we are going for. Uh, I hope it fits something reasonable in the rear. And yeah, I could go with this one. It's quite good to start out with. Uh, this one has um, uh, drag of 0.35. This one is just amazing. Like eggshell egg cars are awesome. And they all look the same, but they are awesome. Very efficient, very, very German in that sense. Um, even though Saab did, did those, didn't they? And what? Well, Porsche and mm, Porsche back in the day. So, okay, uh, we are going for hmm, spa uh, aluminium space frame. Can't go with leather because that is completely against our company philosophy. Uh, steel chassis, though, because we don't really have anything else. And we could galvanize them, but nah. Nah, you're not supposed to drive these in bad weather anyway. Uh, not with salt on the roads either. And I think we are setting them up to be on mid-transverse. Mid-transverse could work. Uh, is there any difference here? Mid Longitudinal is even more awkward. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that works. Yes, okay. We're going with that and, oh, handling. We need handling. Double wishbone, double wishbone. From the start. That is what we are going to excel at. Oh shit. Oh shit. Now it becomes tricky. We need to have a solid strategy. I think what I'm going to do is design a simple engine um, up first, up front. And that simple engine can be uh, kind of our starting point, our budget point. And then I'm going to design an... A, an engine completely separate from this one, but I, I'll design it anyway right now and that one will be finished for the first facelift and that will be our our proper starting point for a proper motorized vehicle that is according to our vision for for the company Merano quality in engine design and How do we do that? Well? Let's see um, We could start with an inline. That's simple enough Engineering time, yeah. This one has engineering time of 36, while this one has only 24. We need something simple. So I think I'm going with a an inline four build. Oh, this, this background <laughs> looks so terrible. But it's so accurate. It's just terrible. Okay, uh, it needs to be a low capacity engine. And I think we're going with uh, 72 bore, and then uh, let's see. Uh, maybe square? Nah. Nah, let's go under under square. It still needs to rev. And we don't need that much power. We don't have much grip. So, how about a 1.1 liter? And we are going with a direct acting overhead cam because push rods doesn't really want to rev unless you have loads of quality thrown at it. For the proper engine I'm going to design, I think I'm going to jump straight into dual overhead cam to valve. That could be awesome. Okay, so here we go with cast because this one doesn't produce any torque, so we don't have to even uh, pretend to be uh, dealing with, uh, with that problem uh, with a heavy cast. And we then have compression probably around 7.5. Cam profile, yeah, I think we are re revving reasonably high because we have a D4 plus 3 on there. Do we want to put anything else in there? Plus one for extra revability? We we leave that until we actually see the engine graph. And there's no 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 nothing there. Mm, two single barrel carbs, performance intake, and we're going for 92. And of course, put this up to 13.5 so that we don't lose too much sportiness. Uh, the engine should fit just fine. Rear wheel drive, yes please. That's perfect. Okay. Mm, revving for this little engine, this simple engine, 5,500. That is very high for an old car like this, but I mean, why not? Uh, and ignition timing, let's aim for 3,000 optimization, 3,000 RPM. And we go for tubular headers because lightweight. These are the lightest ones. No, not quite, almost. Mm, lightest ones that are not stupid. Uh, 
Uh, we could go with long, but this is our simple engine. This is our simple engine, the, the proper one we're going to design with long tubular. And just drop that size. Man. Let's not pretend we're going to make any power. And then a baffled muffler. Oh, 47 horsepower. Oh, we are making some power. Oh, that's not too bad. Look at that. Wow. 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 Okay. Wow. That's like exclamation mark wow in Discord, please. Now, right now. <laughs> wow. Uh, that is not too bad. Look at this little beast. And we have some compression left in it. And yeah, that's a that's a little river. 53 horsepower? Not too shabby. Can rev it to 6k. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, 55 horsepower at 5,500 RPM. That, that is not bad for a 1.1 liter engine in 1946. That is damn good. Damn, damn good. Mm, okay, I think we are pretty much set up here. Have I optimized everything? So yeah, run 92. That's exactly where we want. 8.0 compression. Holy shit, that's almost a race engine. Ah, yes. Yes, please. All right, the engine uh, family is just called i472 because it's 72 bore and direct acting over head cam. And then we have the budget 1100, even though this doesn't quite look like the budget engine, but for it is a simple engine. It is a simple engine for Merano, the engine experts from Froenia. Okay, and of course, we can't just leave it here, we need to uh, give it a listen. There we go. Oh, lots of burble and backfire. Yes, oh right. Let's continue on. Now we're off to designing our first trim. And of course it will be the, the coop. The little coop. Ah, so pretty. Yes, this will give you, uh, oh, yes, this will give you plenty of opportunity to design something real nice. Uh, just, uh, just remember that you're not supposed to change any of the technical stuff, so I shall make sure that I put out the wheels a little bit and so on, and you're not allowed to change any flaring of the arches either. So, yep, um, you're going to design this thing, which is great, saves me a lot of time. Uh, means I can output more episodes in a quicker fashion and we can concentrate on the things that I'm actually decent at and that would be uh, uh, choosing technical stuff here. Mm, I think we're going straight up for four gears. That's a driver's car. This will be reasonably quick because it's aerodynamic. It's a little, little too cool in this one too. So uh, yeah, that, that will work out just fine. Uh, wheels. Hmm. Sports compound. They are pretty cheap. Uh, do we need? Do we need anything beyond that? How much do, do these cost? Combined material costs 170, basically. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, oh, we can make them larger. Yes, we can make them larger. This looks about the right size. Now I need to up that. 15. Oh, yes, yes, please. Let's uh, have them come out a little bit more. Like this doesn't look too ridiculous for even for an old car. I know they are, they were definitely not at the edge back then, but uh, in the rear don't need quite as much. Yeah, yeah, this is all good looking. Yes. All right. So from here, we are... Oh, you, you are allowed to choose uh, whatever rims you like and stuff, but no mods. No mods. Fortunately, we have a bit of more choice there now. Do we even need a lot of brakes? I doubt we do. This will keep it nice and cheap. And mm, brake pad time, I like 50 would be reasonable. And I think we can go with almost equal brake bias. Uh, no under tray options, no additional cooling. That is all fine. And it will be a two seater. I think we can make our convertible be a four-seater but I, I shall look at the preferences of the demographics first and we are going to put a sports interior into it and premium is that about uh, the right choice yes 800 there and 
465 for the cost over there. Yep, it's decent. And then we go for standard safety because there will be... Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. It's a rear wheel drive um, vehicle with an, a rear engine. We can't have wheels of that size in the front. That is bad. Bad girl. But there we go. Holy shit. That's a good score. That's a really good score. Light Sport Premium. And for uh, 245, that makes it worse. So let's try to optimize this a bit. And we have some suspension tuning to do. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, there's some more work to do. Ah, uh, we can almost flip it. Uh, come on, uh, yes. Holy shit, holy shit, that's a good build. Uh, there's still more to do here. Rear dampers are too, oh no, front dampers are too soft, but I may overshoot. Uh, no, that's fine. That is fine. Yeah, that's, that's looking great. I think we can keep it that stiff because, um, yeah, there's not much, not that much ride height, is there? But we do need a bit more. Don't want to suffer too much in the practicality here. Uh, it's all looking good. And the, the comfort for that matter. 3.4 degrees, that might be a little on the low side. Is this looking good? Yeah, doesn't cost us anything there. Um, not getting, not getting higher. That, that seems to be optimal. Let's see what the car actually looks like here. Yeah, absolutely reasonable. That is something you can work with, you guys. I would... Oh, oh, fuck. Oh, shit. It's a buggy bug. Yeah, we've had that issue with some uh, some of the cars. I hope that will be fixed in a, in a future few patches. I mean, that's, that's unfortunate. I can only look at the car from here. <laughs> you have to design this side too, though. <laughs> And so far, this is looking absolutely fantastic. It might not look that fantastic once the car is out, but um, yeah, sport, 350, <laughs> not bad. And we call it this trim the CLS, which stands for Coupe Light Sport. All right, that makes, makes perfect sense. I will not probably, because of goldfish memory, will probably not remember my conventions. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> can always look them up what my previous calls, uh, cars are called and try to remember. Uh, once I am satisfied, I will save this car for sharing. Okay, yes. And uh, that, that should be all good. Now we can, should we start out super simple and not have a convertible? Because that also adds engineering time. We may not have to do that. I think for the first facelift, we shall add a convertible. I think that makes more sense. Okay, let's let's go with that. But that also means that I can, indeed, now um, take a closer look at exporting this one and save it for sharing. The Titus CLS is our first car that you will find in the list. I will. Uh, Change the, the the name some somehow somehow need to figure out do I need to call them something specific? Um no, I, I shall rename the files slightly so that they are in order. But um that should be fine. I just have to go through them via their names. And what you call your imported versions, uh, that is that is still up for for my thinking debate. Up 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 here in in my attic, that is a little slow sometimes. I hear the gears grinding already for tournament rules. Oh man, so difficult. But anyway, uh, here we go. So this one is done. Now we need to set up the factory. We call it the factory is called. That is, uh, it is. Oh no, that's a tiny. Yeah, it will change. Uh, that is the Froenia C1. Froenia C1 is the, the car factory one. It's super, super creative naming from, from myself, as always. And here we go into, into that and set it up. Um, it is in Froenia. Yes, good. We go to a small factory. A small one. That should be enough. A recommendation aluminium presses. We don't have that though. It's not for a small factory. And we don't need to mass produce this shit. I mean, this is handmade quality. And okay. 
Uh, CLS is in here. And looking good. Currently, cost per production unit is insane. Yeah. That is, that is not good. Only 86.2 cars per month. Is that correct? Yeah, that's not much. Uh, but if we up it, it will be slightly higher. How much does it cost us? Not that much. We're down to 27. Build quality is not quite implemented into the game just yet. So, um, it doesn't, doesn't matter if we slightly over-optimize our, our automation levels. And the tooling quality, well, we are about quality, so let's stay true to that. The factory retooling cost is just 4 million. How high is the build cost? It's just 8 million. That's not too bad. Yeah, let's sign off the factory. Should all be good. So, engineering is next. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. 96. What? Yeah. Oh, say. Wait a sec. Safety. 64. Where did that come from? Um, we have a problem here. This is not how it's supposed to be. This is not supposed to be 123 months. This is supposed to be uh, 24 and 42. I have no clue why they are so high. And if we just lower it like crazy, then... Oh, man. Oh, there's something broken here. Get her up, fix, please. It seems to only be on this, though. All the other values are looking good. All right. I mean, it doesn't matter for the first episode. And I can uh, surely wait for for the recording the next one until we have fixed this on Monday. So uh, should, it should be fine. We have a safety rating of 14.7. That takes me easily into the 50s. So no problem there. It's fine. We don't need anything else. And it's, it's great stuff. But I forgot something here. I forgot something which we can have. And that is to have some quality in the steering column. Uh, we don't have any power steering, but that doesn't matter. This gives us slightly higher stats. And it doesn't cost too much engineering effort. I think this will be fine. All right, there we go. I've re-exported it with the changes, and we should be good. So let's advance forward. Engineering. Ah, that's looking a lot better. Uh, safety 16. That's more or less what we, we, we have paid, would have paid for the standard setup. And anything else? Driver assist also around 15. Interior. Oh, yeah, okay, 19 there. Drivetrain. Oh. Quality. No, that's all, all decent enough. Ooh. Maybe this one. No, this can't affect this one. Oh, it's, I, I really don't know why the safety options all of a sudden are so high. <laughs> this makes no sense to me. Uh, anyway, because everything else seems spot on. And we haven't changed them, so something has broken somewhere. Um, anyway, uh, the pressure needs to be higher. We need to get this thing out there. Can't have the luxury of learning too much. The funding can be a bit higher, not too much. We need to get it out. Five years of engineering right now. Reliability. Oof, yeah, I mean, we can sacrifice a bit. Let's go down to 40 there. Process. Uh, let's drop it slightly there as well. And the tooling. Doesn't need to be amazing, does it? 92 cars. Oh, this is dropping so fast, though. This is dropping fast. Yeah. Uh, we don't have the cheapest cars to, to make. Oh, like the, the cheapest um, cost per production unit. So I think what I'm going to do is to keep it reasonably optimized for production. 100 cars per month, if I read that correctly. And it will take us a little less than five years. Still plenty. And now the engineering of our little engine. That should be easy. So we're upgrading to a small one factory there too. Uh, whoa, build cost, 37, what? Why is it that expensive? Oh, it doesn't change anything? Something is, is broken, as in this doesn't change? Oh yeah, these are just weird parameters. They're not even showing what's going on here. So that's that's fine, they're not, not implemented yet, it looks like. Oh, this makes it really cheap, actually. 
Uh, just 400 bucks of production cost per engine and we can produce 334 uh, per month. That's way too many. We don't need that many. We can easily put it down to 60 there, make it cheaper to tool, and that still gives us over 300. Uh, we do need some extra quality though, because that's us. And we can sign off the factory. And now, the only thing left is to do our production... Oh, no, engineering for this engine. Uh, we don't really need the pressure. We can actually use that for learning. So that's nice. Funding is fine. Well, we are at 56 point... Was, was it 56.7 months or something? We can make the engine slightly more reliable. That is good stuff. And tooling... Oh, that, that's, isn't that the exact same thing that we have on our car? I believe it was. That is all set up. And wow! If this holds true, then this will be awesome. Making a profit already after such a short time with a, an upgraded factory? That is fantastic. Let's lower our target shifts. And the max shifts can be at 2.3. I just want to give them a little bit of leeway there. And yeah. This will drop off real quick though. So let's go with a bit of harsher, a harsher decline. Yeah, I mean, there, there will be competitors coming out real quick. And expected economy. Hmm. We are in an upward trend right now. So I think it will be in, an, oh, in five years. Will it? come out of a recession at that point? Yeah, yeah, probably. It would be around about that timing. So let's leave it at zero. Yeah, yeah, this is all looking fine. Even the sales price is good. And good, we're done here. Let's see, 57, 57, 88, perfect. And we're ready to sign off our first car. The Merano Titus. CLS. Zero months of shift. Well, that was a good thing that we designed a simple engine. Now I need to design a uh, not so simple engine. But looking at the time, I don't think we uh, quite fit in the, the exquisite engine design we are going to do into this episode. That will be something for next time. And the uh, the, the furtherance of the development of this model, the Titus. We'll get its facelifts done and a proper, proper engine installed into it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.